Hello, welcome. Take a moment and try this problem and, and press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, so they want to know what is the solution, if any, to this, right? Notice that there is a choice here with no real solution. And the idea is that often when you're dealing with algebra problems and you see a variable in your denominator, like this right here, it's possible that even though you might be getting solutions with the algebra, they're not real solutions, they're extraneous. Isn't that cool? It's like a fake out. Um, so what do we do here? How do we, how do we figure out what the solutions could be, and then how do we figure out if they're extraneous? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is multiply everything by a least common multiple. But oh well, look at oh no, look at this. We got x plus three and four minus x. If this is x plus three and x plus four, that would multiply to this one right here, and that would make our lives easier. So this happens. I've seen this a lot actually. If you see a problem where this binomial is essentially backwards, put it, fix it. Put it the way you want it. In other words, rewrite it as 3 over x plus 4. But then just balance it out by changing the sign. And why does this make a little bit of sense? Well, imagine you have uh, some numbers. So say we have, um, I don't know, 4 minus 5, so 4 minus x, versus uh, four, 5 minus 4. Well, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. But then you, you reverse the order of it, you get uh, positive 1. Right, they're opposites, and I just messed this up. Oh boy, this right here should be three over x minus four. I just change the order of these two here, and then change the sign as well to match. That will always work because if you change the order in subtraction, you will always get opposites, like you're seeing here. Instead of doing four minus some number x, I did five minus four, and I got the opposite. So that little trick will help you deal with a lot of problems they throw at you. Then over here, we still have the same thing, 2x minus 2 over x squared minus x minus 12. And in this case, x plus 3 times x minus 4 is x squared minus x minus 12, which will often be the structure of the problem you're given. So my least common multiple is just both x plus 3, least common denominator, sorry, and x minus 4. Now that's really helpful because now if we distribute this across, in the first one, it's 2 divided by x plus 3 times x plus 3, those cancel. And what I'm left with is 2 times x minus 4. Then I'm left with 3 times x plus 3, because the x minus 4s cancel. And then x squared minus x minus 12 cancels completely with these two right here. This is, what, this is kind of what you should expect for most of these problems to do. Now we distribute 2 times x, 2x minus 2 times 4, plus 3 times x plus 3 times 3, uh, which is 9 equals 2x minus 2. Let's say we have, okay, over here, 5x plus 1 equals 2x minus 2. I just said 3x plus 2x is 5x. 9 minus 8 is 1. And then I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. 5x minus 2x is 3x. Subtract 1 on both sides equals negative 3. So x equals negative 1. Now, is this an extraneous solution? The only way to figure that out that I know of is to plug it in and see what happens. So we get 2 over negative 1 plus 3, 2, right? I'm plugging in right here. And then, okay, minus 3 over 4 minus negative 1. So it's 4 plus 1 or 5. And then this is just 1 minus 3 fifths, okay? And that's 5 fifths minus 3 fifths, that's 2 fifths. On the right-hand side of the equation, if we plug in negative 1, we should also get 2 fifths. Let's see. 2 times x minus 2. So that's 2 times negative 1 minus 2 over negative 1 squared minus negative 1 minus 12. And what does that get us? Well, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 minus 2 over 1 plus 1 minus 2. And that gets me negative 4. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4 over 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 12 is negative 10, and that reduces to the same thing as 2 fifths. These are equal. So that is our solution here, and that's choice one. All right, I hope that helped.